happy Monday, everybody. We are going to start, hopefully, a weekly recap of things going on in the library world in West Pittston and what we've read, new books, and kind of give you a happy start to your Monday, theoretically. Oh, we have, oh, our big topic. I think a bunch of people saw it yesterday. We posted an article about Colleen Hoover, who is four out of the five New York Times bestsellers right now, mm -hmm. and they're all uh, three of the four are backlisted books. So her newest one was It Ends With Us. We only have the audiobook on the shelf. Everything else is out. But her next book comes out October 18th called It Starts With Us. And the thing that caught my attention about that article was that fans of Colleen Hoover are called cohorts, which made me giggle a little bit. And that was about it. <laughs> but... <laughs> And we were just talking about, I read two of her books. I'm on the wait list for this one. Which were what? Which ones did you read? I read you November, yes. Look it up. <laughs> I read November 9th, because I read it like four years ago. Mm. I read it on November 9th, because I was trying to read 50 books in a month, which I was not successful at. No kidding. But I read <laughs> the book called November 9th on November 9th. It How close like, did you come? I got to like 33. But some of them were comic books. I don't know if that counts. It was, it counts, but it was stretching. <laughs> How about that? So I read that one and I read Ugly Love. I read that one. That's the one you read. In 2014. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm not even sure when it was published. Maybe it, that was, it was when it came out. Yeah. So she has over 20 books out. And thanks to TikTok, she has a huge following now. She's very active on TikTok. And like I said, every single one of her books in the system is currently checked out or on its way to being checked out. So with the waiting lists. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's like very popular. If you like potentially steamy, Ugly Love was steamy. Was super steamy. I don't remember a thing about it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I did write a review on my Goodreads, so there's a tip for you. If you don't <laughs> use Goodreads, use Goodreads to keep track of all of your books. books. You read. Books that you've read or books that you want to read. I gave it four out of five stars, and I even wrote a little re little review that said that I loved it. So, and I have it on my shelf at home, so I loved it enough to like keep a copy for myself. I gave it, it was steamy. I gave both of them five out of five, and I remember nothing. And you rarely give out five stars. I, you are I so must have been, I must have been weak with your stars. Must have been weak or something. A dry spell. Maybe I was in a reading rut or something, and they just got me out of it or whatever. But I said that. Hold on, I have it right in here. I said that it had it was hot and steamy, tragedy, heartbreak, mystery, and a happy ending. Yeah, loved so, it. Loved it. So I think most of hers tend to kind of like be tension, steamy, a little spicy. But Verity, which was last year's book, I think was a lot more thriller. Did you read that one? No, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, obviously, because you would say, no, that's on my reading list now. But Ugly Love is the only one of hers that I that I read. Mm -hmm. I think because it tricked me, because it made me cry. And mm -hmm. I don't read books that make me cry, so I was like, the oh, heck with I her. I'm not reading that cry. anymore. <laughs> I love a book that makes me cry. No. Not in sad cry. Like, happy cry, or like really emotionally, like I'm yelling at the characters cry. <laughs> not sad cry. I don't mm -hmm. want that. But Verity, I think, is like a murdery book. That sounds like my type. And not my type. I don't do murder. Unless it's, I don't know, gothic-y murder. But not. Murder's murder, man. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, that's our Colleen Hoover recap for the week. And you had an article that you wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah. So Published Weekly put something out about Barnes & Noble changing their buying policies. So basically what they're doing is they've already given the stores more power to purchase, which makes sense because they say that like the local buyers know their community and know what the, the people want to read more than just like a corporate office in New York City. And we find that a lot here too. Like books that we see on the internet or all over that are like wildly popular Will and not then go out here. do not go out yeah. here. So it makes sense that the local people are buying. But I think the latest controversy is now about middle school hardback. They are limiting the amount that they are purchasing for their stores to anticipated bestsellers and then are doing mass paperbacks with all of the others. And so publishers and authors are kind of a little up in arms and are taking to social media about that. 
Well, because it like gives kind of a disadvantage to new authors, probably. Yeah, and... midlist or marginalized right. who don't get the attention that they deserve in the first place are now even going to get less, less than, than what they really need. Mm-hmm. But as we talked about, I do prefer paperback books. So if they get all of the books in paperback and just the bestsellers in hardcover. Okay, but we're not talking about adult books, we're talking about kids. So what do you think is best for kids? Like, are they going to beat the crap out of paperbacks? I know for me, personally, I think my hands like to read paperbacks more than hardcover. But for purchasing books on the shelf for kids, I will try to only buy hardcover, A, because they last longer, and B, paperbacks are skinnier and they get lost in the shelf a lot of times. But we have 50 kids reading one book. Right. You've seen the condition of some of the books (laughs) when they come back, though, as well. So kids can be rough on on books. So I don't know. I like a book a little rough around the edges. I have, I have paperback books from my kindergarten teacher that's this like watercolor paint pictures of the ASL alphabet with hands. Okay. And that book is taped back together, but I love it so much. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure I used and abused it, but I like it. It makes it cozy. Yeah, I could get that. So, also, I just don't like hard covers. No. I have tiny hands. <laughs> they get hard to hold. I mean, really? Are they that much? They're like the same size as my nine-year-old. So you can tell us what you guys think, hardcover versus softcover, or what you think about publishers and stores kind of choosing more about what they want to carry. Is there a bias in there with, like, does the buying manager have this bias that they're going to choose certain books over others, which we definitely notice. All publishers have this bias. They want things that are going to sell. And especially if it's like, well, this is how we've always done it. It really cuts off people new new authors yes and he also runs a book group in the uk and he's had a lot of success with this the technique. guy who wrote this article no oh. the james daunt is in charge of barnes and noble right now so he's oh, the okay. one who's making all the changes and it's waterstone's bookstore group in the uk had success with this approach mm-hmm. um and so I guess he's hoping that it's going to be successful here too. Yeah. I have heard that, I believe it is Waterstone, that British booksellers lean heavily towards British authors. So I don't know if Barnes & Noble means the same way in US authors or just bestsellers. It doesn't matter. But they seem bestsellers right now. Yeah. They also have a book club, Barnes & Noble does. I don't remember what this month's book is. Mm. They have a adult and a YA book club. So that's our two think pieces for this week. In the news, I guess. In the news. And our new books for this week, we have a new James Patterson, The Ninth Month, takes place in New York City. Woman, a female main character. New Joyce Carol Oates, called Babysitter, takes place in the 70s. There's kidnapping and drama. It is a little thicker than the average bear. But it is Joyce Carol Oates, so it's probably good. And Emma Donahue, if anyone read Room, you oh. watched the movie? I did not do either. Oh, yeah, me neither. Not but I remember it was popular. It was super popular. Mm-hmm. Not my flavor. This is called Haven, which is a lot more up my alley. It's about three monks. <laughs> <laughs> Leave... <laughs> right up your alley. <laughs> Leave Ireland to go settle the most western island of Europe called Michael or called Skellig Michael. Which, if you are a movie buff, you might recognize because that's where Luke Skywalker has retired in the new Star Wars movies, is Skellig Michael and those big, like, beehive houses made of stone. That's what, the, it's, it's these monks that built them in this story. So... You are speaking another language to me. <laughs> like Star Wars, monks, Ireland, like, check off everything that you would ever... <laughs> Anyway, very different than Room. <laughs> no kidnapping involved. I'm pretty sure that's what Room is, right? No kidnapping. I believe so. Yeah. I think. Faye Kellerman, perennial favorite. I'm assuming, yep. Unsolved Murders. Not my cup of tea. Karen Slaughter. Oh, also. I read a really good book by her. 
all the pretty girls. Oh, she's also the author of Pieces of Her, which is now on Netflix, according to this immovable sticker that is a high point of controversy on TikTok, if anyone's on there. Oh, the unremovable sticker? Yes. Oh, you just like printed right on my Yes. Cover. Also, murder. Yeah. So, if you like murder mysteries, like there are thriller type books, there is no shortage. Right of that especially here because that is by far our most popular genre i remember all the pretty girls was like a really twisted yeah. space takes place in the 80s so i wonder if like all our books are like that yeah. i wonder what i rated that one let's look that up <laughs> while you talk and then our last one which is not a new book but it's a new to us book which is as you wish inconceivable tales from the making of the princess bride by carrie Ellis. pretty sure that's how you say his last name this is one of my favorite movies <laughs> And we quote it regularly. Every single time one of us leaves the house, one of us will yell, have fun storming the castle. Oh my so, gosh, is that where that came from? Yes. <laughs> I do know See, I do say that a lot. I say it when it's our house. <laughs> so we all say that. My kids, husband, anytime. Have, have fun storming the castle. Okay, so Pretty Girls is what it's called. Not all the Pretty Girls. Oh. And I gave it five stars. Whoa. I did not write a review for it though. So it's been very really tantalizing. You, but I think it was like really messed up. <laughs> mm, yeah, not my thing. <laughs> Back to <laughs> funner things. There are color pictures in here of them making the movie, which is that was kind of Is that Zora? No. Oh, Princess Bride. Sorry, I was looking that up. I wasn't listening. Um, yeah, so it's by the guy who plays him. him. Oh. Wesley. I do remember reason. As You Wish. Yes. As he's rolling That's down the, the hill. Best part of this. The romance part is not my favorite part of this. The stabby bits. Those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> like murder. No, no, no. That's, it's a different kind of murder. Okay. It's like murder with a purpose. Hmm. Like a little like bit Dexter. of poisoning. No, I can't watch Dexter either. Isn't that murder with a purpose? I like, yes. Only killing bad people? That is on my DVD slate. It says, like, murder, but for good? Question mark? Right. Which I have not watched. No. Yeah, me neither. But they do, we do have the Dexter New Blood, which is the sequel with this kid maybe oh it's on my list oh. my watch list i just there's so just... many and that and mad men there's just so many oh, episodes oh mad men i just like it's daunting to it think about so good <laughs> i love mad men so much okay mm. <laughs> men in suits uh smoking in the office yes <laughs> yes just constantly smoking did you need that for something oh this yeah I just want to say that everyone should be getting their newsletter this week, too. Woo! And it has all of our programs in it this week. Kids events are already posted. Oh, there you go. So you can sign up on Facebook and hopefully on our website by today or tomorrow. And the e-newsletter will be going out shortly. Yeah. But you, what do you have this week? Nothing. Well, I have kindergarten readiness and toddler story time, which is new. What time is toddler story time? Toddler story time is at 1030. Mm -hmm. We're going to try that out. Maybe it'll get you moved to 11. I'm not quite sure. And kindergarten readiness is still at one o'clock. And I have our literary snoops book club is meeting at noon. They will be discussing Island of the Sea Women, which was a book I read last year that I really, really liked. It takes place in Japan with women who die with no dieting equipment. Hmm. It's pretty cool. It's like a generational story, which is what that book club really, really loves. Stories about women, generational stories, and then if they can get something local, juicy and local. Hmm. Covers all the bases. Yeah, so our newsletter is out and that is on. We are closed on Monday for Labor Day. We will not be open at all. And we are doing a children's books only book sale on September 23rd and 24th. So it'll be indoors children's books only. We do have some children's movies I think we're going to have too. We will be taking donations of clean, usable children's books up until the 17th of September. So if you have some books that your family has loved and you would like to pass on, you can donate them anytime that we are open. You can drop them off. And I think that's it for this week. Yes, ma'am. Yay. All right. Hopefully we will see everybody next week for another recap.